Hey guys, so in the original video I made where I compared a real Surefire 310R to the VFC V1911 copy, um, a few of you had asked, you know, hey, is there a way that I can upgrade the light output on my LED module that came with my V1911 light? So, yes, there is. Uh, there's actually a couple ways you can do it. You can either do it the budget-friendly way or the slightly more expensive way. Either way is it works, but one may be a little simpler than the other. Um, and you'll see what I mean. And it's unfortunately the more expensive way is going to be the easier way unless you have some decent tools at home. So, uh, so anyway, getting onto it, first things first, weapon safety. I know a lot of people are going to ask that. This is my nightstand pistol. Almost always keep it loaded. This gun stays in the safe. So, first and foremost, yes, I do have a loaded magazine. Run the slide back. As you can see down in there, there is nothing in the chamber. So for the purposes of the video, I will keep the magazine removed, separated from the weapon, and I will keep the slide locked open. Same for this gun, the magazine should be empty, and it is. And again, empty chamber. So there's that. Um, so in terms of light upgrades, there's really two main ways you can do it. The cheap way is to modify, the cheap but also harder way to do this is to modify your factory bezel that came with your VFC light. So um, that it does involve taking this apart and there's one way you can do it that doesn't require modifications and then there's another way you can do it that does require modifications. Um, and then, so really it's a, Really, it's, I guess you could say three ways, because there's two ways to do it with this. And then the one that I recommend is to get a completely new, legitimate Surefire LED module. So here's the VFC version, and here is a real Surefire one on there. And you can see the finish is a little bit shinier on the replica, but the, the modules themselves are about the same size. Now, you will notice a definite difference here with the way the VFC looks from the front versus the real Surefire. You don't have this threaded ring insert here because the ones for the Surefire bezels actually snap into place. Those, uh, that lens, it just, it just pops into a frame in there. And um, these are actually threaded in on the VFCs. And you can also see that little, looks like a black ring right there in between the, the silver ring that sits behind the glass lens and then the light um, reflector in there, in there itself. That black ring that's going around in there, that's actually a uh, piece of rubber that's meant to act as a shock absorber, um, which is why it's called a shock bezel, or a shock isolated bezel. So, the, um, the way the real Surefire bezel opens up, take that out, remove the battery. So this is a typical L30, lamp module unscrew the thread adapter and that is the LED module I bought for it I got it off of um, I got it from Lumens factory off of eBay and this is the special one that's designed for a uh, a single battery setup so it is a uh, Really, I think it's like a 2.4 to 3.7 volt is the um, range um, for the input voltage on these. And it is a single mode, single cell setup. So um, that's key, unless you wanna sit there and you know click the switch a bunch of times to go through your functions, do not get the three mode one, get the single mode one. So this is the cheapest, or not the cheapest, but this is the easiest way. So a typical L36 lamp module will come with this and you will get a six volt lamp with it. Just a standard Super Xenon six volt lamp from Surefire. This setup together, if you can find them today, you're gonna probably pay $150, maybe more for it. Depends on how bad somebody wants it. I did see one recently sell though for about 75 or 80, which I thought was a pretty decent deal because when these were still being made and they were brand new, that's about what they retail for, it was about $75. So there's that option. Um, and again, I would recommend if you do that, you're going to have to get this module because a 6-volt Xenon lamp from Surefire is going to put out on one battery, being it's meant for 6 volts, it's going to put out about 10 lumens of light. It's going to be awful. 
Um, now, there is a much harder to find xenon lamp assembly that isn't even, to my knowledge, never even seen a Surefire Mark when they were all laser products marked, like this module here is. This is the same thing. It's a six volt lamp module. But as you can see, this one's actually marked with laser products on it. And this one is the R60, where this module is marked P60. So really, it's, this is just an older one, and they, it was named, you know, different model number. But uh, the actual lamps themselves are exactly the same. And that's also why the 3-volt version will be called an R30, if you can find one, but they're very hard to find nowadays. And two, these eventually burn out, so it's pointless to buy that one. You can get it to LED for probably about the same price as what you pay for an R30. So the question is, is what if I don't want to go this route? What if I don't? Because to be entirely clear, um, even though I did modify this piece from a Millennium Series weapon light and adapted it for these, I did that on my lathe just by literally, all I did was it used to be a hexagonal shape and I just turned it on the lathe and chopped this down. The threading already made it up perfect to that bezel and this thread matched up to the um, VFC threading because both housings are threaded to where their bezels are cross compatible with the VFC bezel or the Surefire. So, the question is though, is how can I modify this bezel? If I don't want to spend that much money, how can I just put a simple module in here? Well, I'll show you. So we first got to take this apart. So you would start by unscrewing this back portion. Now this is going to be spring loaded and it may feel like you're cross threading it as you're unscrewing it, but you're not. So you take that out. You're going to have this spring right here pop out. And then you're going to have this light module pop out. You can go ahead and set both of these parts here aside. You're not going to need them for this. You will need to retain the collar. Then you're going to have to remove this threaded ring right here. Um, it should be not too tight. I was able to unthread mine just with my fingernails, putting it in one of the notches there. There's four notches going around that ring. Just stick your fingernail in there or a very thin, carefully use a very thin flathead screwdriver and then just begin to unthread it. The ring should come unthreaded very easily. It's a very smooth, but also a very fine thread. Pick it up, put it in a safe place, don't let it get damaged or anything like that. Then turn this over, the lens will fall out. Then this aluminum spacer will come out. And finally, the magnifying glass looking reflector will pop out. Um, so you can discard this component as well. We won't need it. So, there's two ways you can go about this now. If you're lucky enough to find an R30, a classic R30 lamp assembly, it's pretty straightforward from here. Literally, all you do is, whereas you saw me with this light, I put the lamp module in from the back side of the bezel and then threaded this on over it. This is going to be a little different. You're going to take this, insert it from the front of the module, just like that. Then... Before you do anything else, keeping your finger here so it doesn't just fall back out, keep your finger there on it, take the rear portion of the bezel, thread that back on. And the reason for that is because there's a, a ring in here machined into the bezel that is not there on the legit Surefire bezels. You can see the opening through there is a little bit bigger than it is on this one. So therefore, that lamp will not insert through there. It can only go in from the front, which is why you had to take the lens off. So then you thread your collar onto the back. Don't thread it all the way down though, kind of actually get threaded on about halfway. You'll notice the lamp assembly is kind of floating around in there. Move it around just enough until you can get this pretty well centered over it the ring insert. And again, this is why you want to back the threading on this off even a little bit more. Like that. Then take your lens, drop that down on there. Then take the threaded insert or the threaded retention ring. Again, making sure your notches are facing up and then press down and begin to thread it on. 
the reason you want to go ahead and have this threaded in is because if this is sitting level, it kind of acts almost like when you press down on it to thread the ring in, it acts as a way to get the thread started and the ring should thread back on fairly easily. Um, you will feel a little bit of that spring tension in there this time because the lamp is pushing up, that spring on the bottom of the lamp is pushing up on it, but you should be able to thread it on um, to where it's about, the ring is about flush with that lip there at the edge of the bezel. You can see that, it's about flush. Then once you reach that point, you thread this the rest of the way onto the back, and boom, you're done. You just put that LED module in there uh, or not the LED module, but you just put a, a standard lamp assembly in it. So then you can just take a battery. Um, I think this is the one that I had earlier. And I don't even know if this battery is powerful enough even to actually light this lamp up. So one thing I did do with mine was I added a Surefire pressure switch to the side of the unit. But you can see there, very, very dim. It even is like surprising how long that takes to turn on. And when you release it, it's almost like a little bit of a delay in the lamp turning off. This is just a classic, just feature of these old lamps. So there's that. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what if I want to put an LED on it? Well, you can. You again have a couple of options. You can either get one of these or you can get one of these cheap LEDs off Amazon um, that was another thing I mentioned. You can get one of those, but these are really meant for six volts and they're optimized for six volts. But I have gotten it to work with a th single three volt battery. Although again, it's not optimal, but I'll show you why this LED module here isn't exactly a drop in fit. So one of the problems with this, if you look at this, you'll notice the LED module has a fatter diameter in the center than the classic P60 does. I'll show you where that becomes a problem is with this ring in here. And I'll show you why you wanna to try to steer clear unless you have some machines, you wanna to try to steer clear of using this. You're gonna to have to take the spring off of it regardless, but here's the problem. You drop that in there, the outside of this reflector portion here is too fat to clear past this ring. So your only two options is either to A, grind material out of the center of that with a Dremel, or what I did, just to make it a little neater, I ended up taking the reflector off because it just unthreads off of this. I took that off, put this in a lathe, spun it, and just took like a millimeter of material off the diameter of this, all total. and it was, it, it cleared through just fine. But, you know, of course, I don't have that LED module out here with me, but I did find, you know, fun fact, I did find that these by Lumens Factory in the center here are machined a little bit thinner, just a little bit smaller. Um, and they will, with a little bit of finesse, these will clear, and that one just dropped right through, but yours may be a little tighter than that, but that one will drop through and clear. Now, the first time I did this, I actually had to wiggle it a good bit. But again, since you got this in there, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take your um, retaining cap module, spin that back up on there. Not all the way, just part of the way. Then take the spacer and the lens and the threaded ring. and thre start threading that on. Now you're gonna notice, you're gonna be thread on, you're only gonna be able to thread this on so far and it's gonna stop. And it's not going to go on as far. And you see that's about flush, but you notice there's a gap back here behind this ring. That is because the spacer in here is too tall, it's too thick. So the only two options is to either one, put the ring in a lathe and turn a little bit off the end of the ring just to shorten it. Or another cheaper way to do it is just to take the ring out again, take that silver spacer out and put it on a piece of sandpaper and just do it in circular motions and then fit it. Do a few things, a, a few passes, um, a few dozen passes on like a, I don't know, 150 grit sandpaper and just keep doing that over and over and over again until you get this thing to fit. 
but for the purpose of the video, I will show you that this does work. So again, drop the battery in, put the LED module in there, thread everything down, and right there. That's actually a pretty decent hot spot on that light, and it's a much, bad, um, a much better um, light output than the stupid thing that came with the VFC light. So there's that. But you can see there, those are your main options. So just to recap, your options are either to source a legit L36, or if you already have a Z32, Try to find this piece that fits Millennium lights and either just put up with it being hex shaped or grind it down yourself. Or if you know somebody with a lathe, you get them to turn it for you to make it round so it looks like it's the classic aesthetics. This is also going to be um, anodized gray. So what I ended up doing, because the aluminum was in the white after I turned it, I just put a little bit of what's called aluminum black on it, which blackens the aluminum to this kind of like a dull, dark charcoal gray. It works good enough for me, but if you really wanted to get nitty gritty, you could just tape over these parts here, just ex leaving this exposed, and just slap a coat of like, probably like a low gloss black, maybe not a matte black, but like a semi gloss black or a satin black on it, and it would come pretty close to matching the finish of your anodized aluminum Z32 bezel. But that's one option, again, that requires more money because you've also got to buy this LED module. The other option, which then this LED module is about $30, just the, the lamp assembly itself from Lumens Factory. That's about 30 bucks. So, or $35 now. So you're gonna have the cost of this plus 35, or you can just spend 35, get this lamp module and call it a day. But again, it's gonna require some modifications to make this work. But yeah, so that's, your, uh, your main two options. And this also works with the VFC um, MP5 light. And I'll do another video on that, but it's the exact same process, absolutely the exact same process.